Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 20. In this tutorial we're going to start taking a little look at some AI. So the NPC we've got, we're going to actually make him walk around. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload in this massive series and indeed every other tutorial on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. AI, artificial intelligence, it's actually a lot easier than you would think. A lot of people always consider AI to be a, a tough thing to code, but the trick is to always start very small and build your way up. Don't just try and build the end result straight away. You'll get lost and confused. So we're going to start simply and build our way up through the series to kind of represent whatever intelligence we need our NPCs to use. So, we have our NPC, we have his animation, we know he works. What we need to do is let's have him walk all the way down to the end of the street on his own. So I'm going to move him back slightly. Let's take him probably to just there, just the corner of this intersection. And the whole idea of what we do is using something called NavMesh. Now, some of you may have heard of NavMesh before, some of you may not. In its simplest terms, NavMesh is a way of telling anything that is an agent, it can walk here or it can't walk here. So, to get NavMesh working, we need to go to Window at the top. And yep, I know we've been here before, we've done a lot of different things in here, but we need to go to AI and then go to Navigation. And it'll bring up over here, just next to the inspector panel, the navigation menu. So, how do we get this working and apply it to this scene? Well, the best and simplest way that we can do it for now is if I double click the terrain, kind of zoom everything out, have the terrain selected, and over here we have a couple of different options. You should by default be on the object selection. Let's tick navigation static, let's tick generate off mesh links, and navigation area let's have as walkable. So just make sure that is selected. Next, go to bake, and we're not going to mess around with these settings just yet because this is, like I say, we start small and build up. All we need to do is click on bake. Down here in the right hand corner, you'll see it just kind of working to itself. Don't worry about this for now. Uh, the end result that we'll see is that this will turn blue. So while that's thinking about it and doing what it needs to do, I'm just going to zoom back in on my NPC. So uh, to cover again, what we're going to do here is we need to set this guy, this NPC as an agent. And we can do that using a C-sharp script. And it's actually very, very simple. But by the end of this tutorial, you'll see just how well it works. Now already, everything is done and we can see all of this blue. Now, some sections aren't blue. What does this mean? This means that the NPC cannot walk into here. So there are going to be a couple of things that we'll need to change. Obviously with the trees, you can see that's there, that needs changing the bus station or bus stop, whatever you want to call it, that looks good enough. You can see going along here, anything that's blue is where our NPC can walk. Unity is using its own intelligence to detect where it can and can't walk. And it's done a pretty decent job, but we'll need to modify it a little bit more. But for now, for all intents and purposes, it is just fine. It'll do the trick for us. So we have the area set up now. Obviously, uh, we will get to a point where I will show you how you can change where he can and can't walk. It's, it, it is really easy. Don't worry about that too much. But let's just get the basics sorted for now. How can I say this? What worries me a little bit is that this is going to be a lot more difficult than it would be in just a normal standard game because there are a lot, a lot of factors in an open world city game to consider. But please don't worry about it. We will sort it. Now. Let's make this guy an agent. So to do that, we need to create a script. In our scripts folder, we have all of these different uh, folders. So uh, 
We'll put this one in, let's have it just in characters. So right click, create C sharp script, and let's call this NPC AI. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So the way this script is going to work is only going to contain two variables. But because we're using some AI features, we need to add AI into the namespace. So at the top, underneath using Unity Engine, let's add in using Unity Engine dot AI, semicolon. Uh, we do need void start, we do need void update, but let's get rid of the annotations because we don't need them. Now let's start by declaring our first variable. So the first variable is going to be where the NPC is going to walk to. So we have to set a specific destination to where the NPC is supposed to walk to. So let's have public game object and we'll just call it um, destination point, semicolon. Now the next one we're not going to have as public because it's basically we're going to show you a different way that we can attach um, an a or rather a component to an actual variable rather than have it as public. So we can kind of do it by default, so it's not clogging up anything in the inspector panel. And to do that, we ignore the word public. We need to declare the actual type, and the type of this one is going to be nav mesh agent and then we can call it whatever we want and i'm just going to call it the agent semicolon so by that standard in void start so we're going to call this as soon as the script starts what we need to do is make the agent equal to the component that we're going to have attached to our actual NPC. So in this case, the component we're going to attach is the nav mesh itself, the agent. So we're going to say the agent equals get component and the spiky brackets nav mesh agent. Of oh, course, bracket semicolon. So just to kind of put that into practice now so we understand what this means is that if we head back into Unity, select our NPC and click inspector. So if it disappears like it has done for me, don't worry, it will only appear, all the blue will only appear when we're in the navigation menu. Seems we're not in there now, it disappears, but rest assured, it is still there. So on our NPC, we need to add component. And obviously we've got all of these again. Uh, so let's search for what we need. Remember it's nav mesh, so let's search nav and there we go, first option, nav mesh agent. So we'll play around with these settings um, in a short while when we get our script working. So let's head back to our script. So we've set that there, no problem. Now what we need to do is set the destination of where we need to get to. So the agent dot set destination and in brackets, Let's have what we've already declared as a game object. So we need to set that game object later on, but we're gonna set it as something specific and I'll explain why uh, in a short while. So set destination and it's gonna be destination point uh, dot transform dot position. Close bracket, semicolon and save the script. So it's as simple as that. This AI script is as simple as that. All we're doing is we are telling the script that this is the component, this is the nav mesh component, and then we're telling it to follow any possible navigation route, which is the blue section, to the position where it needs to get to. So it will avoid any of these areas that it can't go through, i.e. the lamp, the bin, whatever. So. After that's compiled, we just need to drag and drop that NPC AI script onto our NPC right there. And the destination point is something we now need to set. So let's head all the way to the end of this block and we'll need to set a cube. Now, the reason I'm setting a cube is because the idea is when our NPC enters 
this cube, he will then move to a different section. So the cube will then move position to somewhere else, maybe off in the distance over here. And it will keep repeating that process. And we could theoretically randomize where the cube ends up. In fact, we might do that because it'll give us a good chance to learn some new things. But for now, let's just have game object, 3D object, cube. And let's bring the cube to here. So our NPC is going to walk to this section here. And what I'm going to do is right click, uh, rename, and call this NPC001 underscore destination. And I'm going to move it closer to our NPC up here. And I think we might tidy up our hierarchy in the next tutorial as well. Uh, I, I do have a bit of a habit uh, where I get a little bit messy in the hierarchy. And it usually is a good idea to kind of <laughs> tidy it all up when you can. But like I said, maybe next tutorial. Uh, so let's have that there for now. I'm just going to turn off Mesh Renderer because it's not too important. So let's now set that as our destination point. So over here. Now, theoretically, our NPC should be able to walk, but there are a couple of variables that we will need to further change to make sure everything works as intended. So let's press play for now and see where we get to. I'm going to click back on my scene view so we can actually see in the scene. There we go. So you can see our NPC is walking, what appears to be quite briskly. It looks like he's sliding a bit, so we need to change the speed. So let's have his speed set as, let's have it set as three. And then let's press play again. And let's see how he reacts with the speed change. There we go. He's maybe sliding a little. It's just a bit of trial and error getting speed set just fine. Uh, remember, this uh, nav mesh agent is individual to everything uh, that you would have moving. So this speed doesn't relate to the next NPC that we have or whatever. Um, so let's change it to 2.8 maybe. And let's see how that looks. Back to our scene view. Is he sliding still? He looks like he's still sliding, so a little bit less. So like I say, it's all trial and error. So whatever happens now, I'm going to keep his speed at this. Keep everything. Okay, so that's relatively decent. That's pretty much just right. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to bring our NPC a little bit further back so he has more of a distance to walk. And I'm going to press play, and I'm actually going to play in the game view so we can see just what he does real time. So maybe we could actually time this just right. So as he kind of maybe walks past us as the camera goes down. And there he is walking. See him losing his way a little bit. He's kind of walking in the road. How are you walking in the road, my friend? You should probably walk on the sidewalk. Looking good. So is he going to turn the corner and walk away? Oh, there he goes. Do you see what he did there? He actually navigated where he could and couldn't walk. That is how easy it is to actually make that AI work in concept. It's absolutely fantastic. So now let's quickly try one more thing before we end this, just to see what our NPC will do. So we've got him on a direct route, basically. So he walks all the way, no problem. That's fine. So what happens if we move him over here and down this street a little bit? Well. Let's have a look. So let's press play and let's head to our scene view so we can actually get a bird's eye view of what he's doing. There we go, he's crossing the road just fine and he will navigate this section here, turn and then turn down the street. And he's walked straight through us. 
But there is a reason for that that we will deal with in the next tutorial. Because the next one's going to be a lot of fun. It's working quite well so far, I think. Everything seems to be in order. And he should navigate this a little bit. Oh, no, he stepped on there, which is fine. But he didn't walk through the chairs. And he's got to where he needs to get to. Now, what we could do is let's move it this way. Let's move it this way. Let's move it this way. Move it back onto here. So you can see he will navigate everything he needs to. So we are well on our way to getting uh, NPCs doing what they should be doing. Obviously, there are many glitches and bugs that we have to overcome, but that's just the price you pay for game development. It takes a while to get things working, but as I said earlier, always start very small and build up. And I'm quite happy, quite pleased with how much we've actually managed to do in this tutorial already. We've got pretty decent AI working for our NPC. So next tutorial, we're going to deal with collisions a little bit more. Uh, and I think we're going to deal with our hierarchy. Um, because I, I really, really do want to tidy up a little bit because I don't want to get this too messy because it's going to get very messy eventually. So until the next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.